So let's pick up where we left off last time. <laughs> I knew. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Remind so us. It was. God, I, at least two years ago that we sat down, the, the movie had come out, and it hadn't been dissed for the Academy Award nomination yet, which was, I'm sorry, a big uh, travesty. It should have been in there. But anyway. Yeah, and we all agree. <laughs> Hollywood politics. Ho yeah, yeah but I think, I think it ended up where it really had to in the way that... It did get the spirit everybody, It made more of, almost more of a stink in the way that, in, in, in the actual industry itself, that why? Right than it would have if it did. <laughs> it's just, I think at the Spirit Award at the end of the day, yeah, which is, which like is an the Oscar independent. Anyways. It's the independent. I mean, got the got the top thing in there. So you know, we got to rock okay. in front of Elton John and Mariah Carey and blow them away. <laughs> <laughs> you got you blew Mariah Carey away. She was. She well, was Elton crazy. John. Elton John <laughs> was, was totally right into it. Man. Really? Was, yeah, really, they're, they're, really. They're, was he like metal on metal? Yeah, was he doing that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool. So I and it's actually in the book. We saw it. You can actually. You could actually see him actually, and then he's applauding, and you could see, it's great, man. Great to actually Engaging. see. Engaging, it was amazing. Well, didn't you run into Paul McCartney? Who ran into Paul McCartney? Both of us. Yeah, we yeah. both did. Yeah. And, and, and he saw the movie, and he, he liked it and everything? Uh, absolutely. He knew exactly who we were, you know? He turned we, around we, and goes, we, oh, we, damn, the, the most bizarre thing, okay, we had met, we had met Quentin Tarantino. Right. Quite, uh, like a while back. We were at another awards thing that we ended up. We had met him, but he hadn't seen. He hadn't really hadn't seen the movie. He'd heard all about it. And we'd met him and all that, and we got, went to the Critics' Choice Awards. And Paul McCartney was there for some. He was up for some song. For, for a song, and he they, didn't win. He, but in any case, I'm. We get up from the table <laughs> because we see McCartney, and we're going. Let's go now. This is right? our chance. So, yeah. so we're trying to get to McCartney, and Quentin Tarantino's all freaking out. They gave the comes up and starts freaking out on me. They gave the Dolphin movie, they gave the Dolphin movie an award, and they didn't give you one. This is insane. He's like freaking out. And he's, I'm going Quentin Tarantino. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Quentin Tarantino is. Th let's just let's just run past this again. Quentin Tarantino <laughs> is blocking you from getting to McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm going, uh, you know what I mean? and I could see the entourage is starting to collect Paul and take him away, and I'm going, I'm losing my chance. <laughs> you know, so it's like, so we we bolted off. You know, we said, we'll see you. Bit. Nice meeting you, da, 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 and just like. Ran up to, Paul, to to where Paul was, and then he, he was he, just he, getting ready to go. He catches eyes with he catches eyes with Rob, and then he looks over and he goes, "Oh, it's the Anvil Boys! Are we rocking tonight?" <laughs> <laughs> and right there, my jaw dropped. to go, "This guy knows like, who we are!" Wow, wow. Yeah, and then we asked him if we could go blow a joint, and he said he'd like to. You know, let's go behind <laughs> the curtains. He says maybe yeah. just duck behind the curtain, and his entourage is going, "Oh no, 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 no!" And he's going, "No, no, no, no! God, I can't do it now." He would have wanted to though. Okay, so a very, very friendly, uh, very, very friendly and warm uh, kind of response to us. You know, like he knew, like he knew us. He knew us. He'd seen the movie, obviously. So three years into this, the ride continues. Well, see, the fifteen minutes of fame has actually gone into two hours. About two hours yeah. now. Yeah, yeah that's what we're that's how we're making the fun of it now. Are yeah, um, are you guys making a living from the band now? Yeah, oh Absolutely. yeah, absolutely. So you've given up absolutely. the jobs and the jobs have been history, and we've been doing just fine from rock and roll. Thank God. Uh, we've got a great manager who has turned everything around for us. He's put us. We play that's, 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 that's what it's all about, uh, man. You, it was is getting to the point where where uh, people on the top, you know the the top guys that can put you all in the right places get interested, yeah, right? Because you're a commodity worth worth, that, worth reckoning. You have to surround yourself with the good people, and then they will do good things for you. That's what we've learned so far, you know. But then it's, it's but then it's but but years. but, yeah. but, well, but <laughs> Alan, Alan, the, the real truth is at least it has the, the at test, least we have it. The test really came down not necessarily about the movie, to, about continuation. It was about the live performances that we did. Mm -hmm. We yeah. played somewhere in around for four hundred thousand people in last the last year. in the last yeah. in the last months. little while, right? Live. So um, it's um, it's also it's also all getting to, to the point. It's also getting to the point. To, that we've solidified, solidified ourselves in on that, real band. that, le people that have level that people that didn't take it seriously are actually, we, pa we passed yeah. the test. Right. I call it, we won the battle. You know, uh, people came out to see the, um, if we're real, and we are real. Can I tell you a story? I was listening, this was shortly after the movie was released, 
and I was listening to the BBC. Saturday, Saturday morning, reading the paper, having a cup of coffee, listening to the BBC. And they had a movie reviewer on. And he came on and he says, you know, I've seen this movie about this uh, band, they're called Anvil. I'm not really sure if it's real or not. It's, it seems <laughs> that it's too crazy to be real. I, I'm not sure if it's, it's probably just some spinal tap thing. So I get right on the computer and I go, send him an email says, trust me, real band, I know them, real deal. And then they go, then a few minutes later, the guy comes back on and he says, well, I just got this email from this man in Canada, and he swears that this <laughs> Anvil band is absolutely real. So we'll have to take his word for it. Right. <laughs> well, we are real. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't really be here right now. If any of this wasn't real, we wouldn't even be here right now. So you have the whole summer ahead of you. And, uh, okay, let's go back. Okay, you had the, in the movie, you made this record, mm -hmm. which didn't work out perhaps as well as it should have for a bunch of different reasons. Didn't... didn't well, it was a, well, it was a pretty successful well, record I, I considering... Really, uh, really, you know, really? Okay. Yeah, it was. It was a pretty successful record considering what was, how it was, you know. It was, it was tied into the movie, which actually didn't give it its full potential because the movie was shown, I guess, given okay. that. But we've made a new record now that was all about just the band and the music. And uh, if, the future, if the future of metal in 1982 was metal on metal, then Juggernaut of Justice is the future of metal in 2011. Well, I, I have to say that one Sunday morning, Rob invited me over to his house, and uh, we, we sat upstairs in the studio where he does all his painting, we listened to the thing, and this is, this, is a, this is a really good metal record. Did you take any of my suggestions about moving songs around? No. Ow! <laughs> no, but you know what? The song fucking A is uh, turning into a total smash hit. Okay. Uh, as we speak, like people you just called losing. that, though, didn't you? I did. And, and I did call that. You did call that. So you did say that. So you, you know that that song's going to have something special. Oh, and you well, thought it was buried, but it no, isn't. no. Well, it's it's the one that everybody's going to be chanting at the gigs, right? Absolutely. Well, it's, they're chanting all over the internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you? Okay, here's the album, Juggernaut of Justice. It's got. Uh, I can't read that. Is it? Thirteen tracks, right? Twelve. Twelve tracks. It's got twelve tracks, uh, including the, the the swing instrumental at the end, yeah. which is. Yeah really quite bizarre for these guys. Uh, so you guys are, are, I guess you're going to go on tour for the rest of the summer. Yes, we are. We started a Canadian tour uh, May 6th, and we still going coast to coast. First time ever, right, Lips? Yeah. Come on, going, come, you, on. come on. You've yeah. never done a coast to coast we, Canadian tour? Never, never, no. never coast All those times coast. I saw you in Winnipeg, you never, that no. was not part of a tour? We, we've never been in Newfoundland. We're going now. Okay. We've never been to Halifax. We're going now. So that's what I mean by coast to coast. We did, we've we been did, to Vancouver. We've been, we'd been, on, we'd been on, in 1981, we did it. I can, t I can tell you, we did Canada probably four times in our entire career. Really? I mean, yeah, complete. <laughs> complete, but, but not out east. But never out east. So this is our first I mean, we, time. I mean, it, well, outside other of than Hall. outside of playing Moncton with ACDC. We, we've never been there. We, we, we were played in our Mukto. <laughs> yeah, everybody we have a big has. fan base. We have a big fan base, so you know we're, we're looking forward to uh, a lot of good things. How about internationally? Uh, then we're going to Europe for the month of uh, June and July. Some metal festivals. Yeah, and, yeah, and our own shows. Own shows. And then we're playing Toronto Heavy here in Toronto, Downsview mm -hmm. Park, on the twenty fourth. Yeah. Then we got a few more shows in August, and then we're going to do an American tour, which is being planned now. Wow. And also the on the on the Canadian tour as part of from coming from out east, because we're starting out east, we, we got four or five shows with Alice Cooper. Yeah. That's what I meant to ask yeah, about that, yeah. Release. I read about that the other day, and, and you, so you are gonna play with Alice Cooper. Yeah, we are. We're looking forward to that. You know. <laughs> well, it's, it's, all, it's all just coming together. It took a while, but it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're just gonna just get we better. We went into the boys club. Yeah. You know, that's what finally happened. They've let us into the party. It's, that was a expression. But you know, the, the, the real truth is when anybody makes it at any point in their career, it's magical. Because mm. it's, it, it's, We're having it's, fun. A, it's about luck. We're having so much there. fun. You know what, the most important thing is the music is real and it's full of integrity. And that's what this is really all about for us guys. You know, what we're backing up is the deal. It's real, full integrity. So. Well, I, I hope the ride goes on for a whole lot longer because it's been awfully fun to watch. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Even more fun to live, man. <laughs> I, bet. I mean, you know, we have yeah. record contracts now, lucrative ones uh, for many albums. You know, like, it's, you know, we've been 
our management has really done some great things for us. Uh, and all we have yeah, to do is carry on. Yeah, but that's everything. Yeah. You know? Who's talking for you in the business will change everything about how you do business. Well, then that leaves you to be able to concentrate on the music and the playing, right? right. So you don't and have to worry about exactly. you know, and advancing and gigs and, and backline, getting paid and all that crap. You're right. But everything, everything from every, everything, it's taken a whole load, it's made it so that focusing on our music is all that we, re and our performance is all we have to really worry about. Well, I can tell you that... Which is, how, how many years did it take me to get to that point? <laughs> There's one other thing I'd like to mention. Uh, you know, there's this phenomenon that's been going on. We have this thing called the Anvil Metal Pounders Union. Damn, I forgot okay. my card! Uh, oh, I left it on my desk at home. Anyways, the family is growing so big. It's incredible. I think, that, I think the, the great deal... It's of incredible. The, I think the great deal of attraction is that you're actually personally identified. Right. That you get your picture taken and you're part of something. That you actually, and the only way that you can be part of something is by having your picture there. Right. And I think that that, that attraction is, and it's a, it really, makes it a personal thing, it actually makes it really, a, that you're real. You're not just a statistic or somebody that just got the card. You're actually a face to that card. You're, you're in a family part of the album. family. You're um, it equals with, with everybody else. And it's, the people within this family really cool. are now sharing musical, people are meeting each other through this thing. It's turned into like a, this big social it's networking like a, thing. Yeah, it's a it's community. Yeah, it's incredible. A community. And it's Facebook. Community. Yeah, yeah. It's it's what's a metal pounders union. They're all pounders and they're all pounding together. It's it's we're watching this grow under. But it's, it's interesting. We've had uh, we've had um, uh, a number of different celebrities t that are also in in, the, in have their pictures in there oh. with the cards. Oh, like Steve O from Jack oh, Jackass. Jackass. Yeah, like. Um, Twisted Sister guys. Yeah, rock stars. And like, there's more and more. Uh, it's guys who accept. The demand, the demand is getting so huge for it. Like, it's growing. Like, if we talk about this in a year from now, it'll be like, I'll, I'll probably say everybody's in this thing. The okay, well, we, we are going to talk about this a year from now. Because okay. I want to see how, how this and album. we're having fun with it all, you know. And oh, sure. Just stay, and, and try to stay connected with, with the fans and that they know that we're real people. <laughs> and, and you realize that you, you're, like, unbelievably blessed with this opportunity. I mean, this. Oh, yeah, we well, were, that's it. Yeah, well, Other that's, bands might not realize how what a blessing it really is because they made it when they're 25. Right. You don't re appreciate things the same way as when when you get you know you hit you hit 50. All of a sudden you go, wow, man! If this is this is really very very special. It's not something that you can really look at as an everyday an everyday occurrence or something that you can take for granted in any shape or form. So on every level, you hold on to that appreciation and. Take it for every moment that you can. So that, that's what it's really all about. Well, Juggernaut of Justice is out on the 13th of May. 10th. 10th? Sorry, 10th of May. Uh, I have heard it. Uh, your singing is about an octave lower than where it was. Well, it, actually, it's, it's not so much that. It's actually, it's, it's actually the non-use of the, of, the of the upper screaming. You just I don't think you've sound, sounded better than what you sound here. I mean, if not no. I mean, it, if if you compared it, let's say to the first album, where there, there was not really a lot of screaming, mm -hmm. it was all like sort of. I didn't start screaming until later on, <laughs> but um, on the other side of it, it's still really melodic, mm -hmm. but not but not to the point where it's it's bubblegum. You know, no, I the, would never, I would never go there, but it's much more, much more in line what we were originally, minus a lot of stuff that we probably sh that shouldn't have never been doing, or I shouldn't have ever been doing. Well, that I was doing because I never had had production well, for people to go. The producer why are you doing that, man? Why don't you try this? See, that's why you need a producer. Somebody to say yeah. stop. Well, it. that's the producer, right. The producer, do it again. Because producer, you think because you're thinking right this thing. is this, this is cool. This is cool. And then producer goes, well, try this and see if this is cool. And no, no one has ever been there to say to say that or or to even indicate that that's what I should do. Let's give the producer like a like as an example, Chris Tangaridis. He never changed that aspect of my singing. Never even attempted to. Did, didn't even actually. Basically, what I would do when I w worked with Chris is I go in with what, what I wanted to do, and he got me to re to do it. 
So who, let's, and God let's is the best, the best I one. could do it with what I exactly what I want to do. What I did with what I did with Bob was slightly different Bob in the way that Bob Marlette. Bob Marlette. Okay. What I did with Bob was slightly more slightly uh, different because I went in with sketches of the where the lyrics should go. Mm. Where what I didn't want to learn any vocal lines previous to actually doing it because then that way I wouldn't. I wouldn't be putting parameters and limitations on what I've come up with. Bounce it off this guy and see what he thinks and then I'll know where to go with it to shape it to where it has to go to. So what would happen is like as just as a raw example, I come in with a song called Going Deaf. Going Deaf. And he goes you can't do that. <laughs> I go, why? He goes, it's geriatric. Who wants to hear about you going deaf, man? He goes, take 40 years off of it and call it the opposite. Call it turn it up. I went, wait a second. And I look at the page and I think about it for a second. The lyrics virtually were unchanged. A couple of adjectives, verbs, all the words were still talking about making it loud so I could hear. See, that's why you so see a then, producer. So, and then all the producer did is said, call it turn it up instead of going deaf. And then all of a sudden, it's something completely, completely, and it gives a much, much more It's way more attractive. Man. Way more attractive. And these are, these are, the, these are, these are ways that, that a producer takes what you have and he brings it to another level. It's just suggestions, if nothing else. I mean, it's still, you know, if when I come in for the singing, he's going to try it. Instead of singing that note, try that note. Take your, try that note and see where you go there. And then, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you go that and go, oh, wow. Okay, wait a second. And then you do that and then you go, wow, that leads to this. Why don't we try it? And then you kind of build it and you, before you know it, that's perfect. That's the way it should be. For me, it's it's just it removed a lot of a lot of a lot of the stuff that you pro I shouldn't have been doing that made that actually made it very very difficult to reperform later. Oh yeah. Okay. There was that involved with it too. There was it doesn't sound it doesn't sound particularly attractive. It has its place and it had its time. Because the other the other aspect is it's not really fashionable in a certain sense to be screaming <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, that was of a time and an era, so. There was a time and era where that everybody was doing. Yeah. That was the way it, and what do you sound like screaming, whether it was, you know, like lot, most of it, it was a lot of, a lot of the high s singing that was happening was nothing really more than a scream trying to be in tune. <laughs> <laughs> but. That was part of what heavy metal, and, and still really is. But at the end of the day, it, 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 it's, it, it, you know, it's just cleaned up. Okay, you have to tell me the Dave Grohl story. How are you hooked up with him? Well, Dave Grohl's, a, um, we, as we found out, was, is a, been a longtime fan, but it, we were about to do the Spirit Awards, and he was, he's friends with the guys at VH1, and they called him up and asked if he would like to come to the Spirit Awards to introduce the band because we were playing there. And he said, there's nothing I would like to do more than to do that. And like I'm standing at, at the Spirit Awards at the, at the sidewalk and this limo pulls up and Dave gets out with his wife and there he is, he's got a, a beautiful Gibson guitar case. And I take a look and I'm going, wow, fucking great, man. He's gonna come jam metal on metal with us. That's first thing I thought. Comes up, puts the guitar case down, and goes, this is a present for you, man. I've, I've, I've always loved you, and you, you're one of the only rockers around that plays a semi-hollow, and you could appreciate it. And uh, you've always been a big influence on me, and here's a guitar. Wow. Wow. Dave wow. Roll model. <laughs> yeah, the Dave Roll model. And uh, did you end up doing some work in a studio? Yeah, so like he introduced the band, which was an amazing thing, because they're trying to tell him exactly what to to say, and he went up and just trashed it, and just went up and and did his Dave Grohl thing. It was amazing. 
And afterwards, of course, we, we had won the award and we were hanging out and having a, a, a little bit of champagne. And, and there was Dave and he starts going, you got to come to my studio. Like, this is 606, right? Yeah, yeah he's going, studio 606. He says, really, you got to come to my studio. Make he says, I'm going to make it. You got to make your, some of your, you got to make your album there. It's, it's important to me and we're going to make it so that it's, you can do it. So did you? Yeah, absolutely. Did. Sure did. How much and he this? threatened us, you don't do it, I'm never going to talk to you again. Yeah. So how much of this record is from... We, we recorded the uh, drums there. Yeah, all the drums. We recorded the drums there. Well, if great, you've great. got to record drums in a studio, yeah. it's best that it's Dave Grohl's studio, don't you think? <laughs> well, that's actually, well, uh, the, that's the, 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 it's an acoustic instrument. He's got a great room. So, the, it's, so it's, it's really, really, really imperative that, that that's it's like that's the heart and sound mm -hmm. of your of a of a recording is is the drums and then you put everything on it, regardless of whether and what usually what you're doing when you when you do that is you need a really big massive room so you can get distant miking close miking and be really really detailed, and you isolate all the other instruments and that's that's the whole purpose of using one of these big massive studios in today's in today's recording industry that's why you use those places you don't sit in a in a studio that's like that that costs it's an astronomical amount mm -hmm. to record in a place like that because of the space simply because of that now you can have top notch recording recording equipment in your own home which which bob did so then we moved to bob's studio and do all the overdubs in that's cool it Motorhead, makes sense. Motorhead he doesn't guys, even have to leave home to get to get to work. You know, makes sense for him, right? The Motorhead guys recorded at six oh six. So when when Mickey D told me about that, I just said, "How how bad?" Can yeah, I mean, be? lots of the, that's, <laughs> that's what the big bands do. They all record in the big, massive studios, get all their bed tracks. And even got a big the, banner going the to the smaller, in smaller, in the, really yeah. smaller studios. Really, producers like studios. Right that's generally the way things are done these days. Because it, it just makes sense. It was, it was anyway, a great studio. Yeah. Okay. Dave, Dave's got one in his home in his garage, but uh, he uses that also for himself. We, we didn't get to go there. Well, I, again, I want to watch this ride. We will re rendezvous here in a year, and, sure. and you'll have more stories. Absolutely. So congratulations, guys. Good luck, and uh, keep it going. Of okay, I'll, right. thank What you else would it be to do? <laughs> Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.